Hello YouTube. Today I have a 2009 Nissan Versa doing the spark plugs. Okay, so here's all the tools that I used for the job. Now you don't need all of these tools, like you don't need an impact driver, but it really saves a lot of time. It's, uh, you gotta remove the intake manifold for this one, so let's get to it. First step, remove the plastic cover. Two ten millimeter fasteners. The bolts out. And then down here by the dipstick, you can pull up, get those two grommets to let go. Now remove the dipstick for this job. Okay, next I'm gonna remove this pipe here because it's blocking my access to some of the bolts. So you need to pull up on the center of these clips here. Pops out. Put them up here. I organize all my bolts starting on the left, going to the right usually in separate piles. That way you're not wondering where all the screws go and everything when you're putting it back together. Okay, pull up over here. comes out. Next I'm taking off this positive crankcase ventilation tube. Okay and then for the intake pipe here there's two eight millimeter band clamp comes right out. Okay, there's one more positive crankcase ventilation here. I got that. Okay, now in the back there's going to be two 12 millimeter fasteners that are holding up the rear. Usually it's two. We'll see on this engine. Here's my 12 millimeter ratchet wrench. For the first one, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, that spins. Two wrenches for this part. So I have to hold this side while I go at it on this side. If you can, it's better to work with your bare hands. Here it is. That's one of them. Okay, next I'm going to remove the throttle body here. There's four 8mm bolts. Maybe leave two in when you're breaking the last one. Because it twisted it pretty hard there. Okay. Now it's free. I'm going to take a strap and put it in one of the bolt holes and just uh, attach it to the fender over here. So you ready to be mad? Uh, this is something I'd consider a bad design because right underneath the throttle body there's a bolt that it completely blocks and that is the other side bolt. It's not the worst, it just takes a little bit of time, two minutes. Okay, then there's that 10 millimeter fastener down in here. I 
And at this point, stop resting your weight on the thing because you're going to snap it. The intake, not the thing. It's supposed to be an educational channel, not teaching you to call everything a thing. This doohickey comes out. There. Very nice. I'll put that with the other bolt up here. Now we can wiggle it around a little bit, but there's still 10 more bolts, I think. Not 10, but a few. Start over here. One right over the alternator. Number one. Don't slip. One. There's two. Okay, I'm just gonna remove the reservoir because I actually have to. So take it off here first. Cool. And then down here, there's a little clip you just pull out on. Uh, yank up. There you go. Now I can get in there. For three. Hmm. This is in the way. Well, I'm just going to keep the bolt with it and place it up here. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm going to use some needle nose pliers and disconnect this wiring harness from the intake manifold. You just squeeze it on the inside. I don't know if you can. Of course you can't. This one. You squeeze right here. And then pull out on the other side and it should come out. Let's see, maybe I can get it with one hand. There we go. Two more to go. Now I can get to this one easily. Ah, that's number four. Oh shit. Can you see that? That's number five. Okay, so jiggle jiggle. There we go. Lifting up over the bracket on this side, getting a lot more space now. Always check the evap. Oh, we got another line back here. You got the intake pulled out far enough. There's another line back here. Um, if you want to just go ahead and get it up here before you take this out, you can go that way, but I'm just going to remember I have to put this in. So needle nose pliers. Give her a squeeze, twist, rotate, pull. Now, usually these ones come off easy. There we go. Okay, so now I need to definitely take it. Out. All right. So first, I'll unplug these.
three, four, one, two, laying it in order, three, also in order, four, these are coil packs by the way, it's like a camera flash that goes off and lights your spark plug. Okay, and these are an oddball size, 14 millimeters. This is my favorite kind of extension for this because my socket's just not deep enough. So this one has a little edge that catches the socket and, and it, can, it can sit right there, which gives me just enough space to get the spark plugs out. Okay, that's loose. It's still in the hole though. One. Alrighty, these are our new parts. I'm putting in iridium spark plugs. I'm not advertising for this company, it's just it was a good price. And an ultra power intake manifold gasket. That's Get them in. Oh, you're still recording? Okay. Well, now you're gonna need a rag, some brake cleaner. We're gonna clean up this gasket mating surface. And you try to wipe the whole thing because it evaporates so fast. Uh, that's not the nicest. There's shit in the engine. Now, that stuff just fell in there when I took the intake off, but you should really take some rags and shove them in the hole like that before you clean it. Just a uh, little protection. You don't want little bits going in the engine cause pre-detonation or something. So just like that, and we're gonna wipe it off with brake cleaner, make sure it's smooth, use some uh, 500 grit sandpaper or around that if you want. Okay, so change the old gasket. Throw it in the trash. Probably wipe this off before you remove the gasket because now there's some that's going to fall in there. But I have compressed air so I can do it that way. Soak in my rag. Also soak in the whole car. It's very important to soak the whole car with brake cleaner. Just try not to soak paint with the uh, brake cleaner. Well, rule of thumb is. Try to use the chemicals on what you're trying to use them on. Okay, so here's our spark plugs. They all come in individual boxes. Don't drop them or you'll mess up the spacing. The gap. Now if you have a spark plug gapper, 
you can go around and check the gap when you're installing. I just checked the brand new ones. They're 40 thousandths of an inch, which is, I think, what it's supposed to be. So I'll check the old ones. Ho oh, ho. 53 thousandths of an inch. They did need to be done. That's for sure. Now I put a tube on it. And install it carefully. So you don't mess up your gap. Just put it in a couple turns. Pull your tube out. There we go. Now install your coil packs. It's not super important that they go back where they came from, but I like to do that. I think it's a good habit. I'm gonna put the bolts in first so I don't so it doesn't move around when I plug it in. Alright, and the rest is opposite of what you just did. Spark plugs are in, good, all clean. I think we're ready to install. We got this twisted line, don't forget. Take off my little helper doodle there. side okay we start with these five bolts and you're going to torque from the middle out go over them twice do it loose out a little tighter and then torque the outside bolts here's number one I'm gonna put this one all the way in so it holds the gasket in place and it doesn't fall out on me just taken this bracket out in the beginning. Keep the orientation good there. I don't think it matters. Good habit though. Okay, let's try this bolt one more time. Go in your home. Oh, there you go. The 10 millimeter bolt. Let's hope to God it lines up. I should probably put this in before you torque down the manifold. No, it lines up. My thought originally is that since the manifold comes in a couple millimeters when it's torqued, you might actually need to do that first. Need a stubby 10 millimeter socket for this one on a small quarter inch ratchet. done. Now the other side is a 12 millimeter nut and bolt. Oh, I got ahead of myself. I forgot to connect this line before I put the intake manifold back in, so you guys get to watch me struggle. You get to see just how hard it is if you forget. There, that's on. I'm going to push the clamp down so I can reach around and grab it with my pliers. Put down in. Grab onto it. Awesome, right back where it was. That wasn't bad at all. Now for the nut and bolt. Bolt comes in from the back. Uh oh. There we go. 
Had to pull up a little bit. On the intake. Where are my wrench? Oh, there you are. Connect the PCV valve. Actually, I'm not sure what this one does, but over here, that looks like a PCV to me. This one over here looks more like a PCV to me. This one's just an imposter. I'm sure they both do the same thing. Right back where he came from. Perfect. All right, just check out the gasket for the throttle body. Make sure it's all smooth and there's no dirt on it. Also feel the throttle body itself. Mine's good, I'm not gonna clean it. Okay, it should wanna sit in its home right there. Okay, bolt number one. I'll start with the top because then it can sway and swing on the top bolt so that I can line up the bottom ones. One nice thing about this job is when you take off the throttle body, it doesn't puke coolant. Sometimes they do that. Remember, get all the bolts in before you start tightening it. And they might not go in at all. Eight millimeter socket, not super tight. It was hard to get off because of the corrosion and the threads that builds up over time. When you put it on, don't go as tight as you think it was. Maybe five to, five to eight foot-pounds. Or till it creaks once. We'll put the grommet brackets back for the engine cover, whatever you want to call them. Give it a name in the description. Make me laugh. I'm gonna go like that, not like that. One, not that tight. It's good. Perfect. Plug in your. Okay, this is the third time I tried to record this. Uh, oh well. Okay. Uh, once you get the intake on. You got it all torqued, then you're going to do this connector, you're going to put the intake snorkel back in with the two 8mm hose clamps there, PCV line, the wiring harness here, and then you're ready to put this intake portion back in with the two clips that go here and here. And yeah, um, sorry about that guys, I'm just going to fast forward the rest of this repair. Okay, so when you're finished, should go without saying, just see if it starts. See if it runs good. See if you have a check engine light. I don't. If you forget your EVAP solenoid, you'll have a check engine light for sure, immediately. But, yeah, it seems to be running good. Give it a little rev. RPMs come down as they should. It's on cold idle right now, so it's a little bit high. But yeah, if you... Uh, say there's some dirt under the gasket and it didn't seal right you get a vacuum leak and that would cause the rpms to run away a little bit more and if you think the rpms are running away a lot you can get one of those uh, little bluetooth scanners off of ebay i'll put a or amazon i'll put a link in the description and that will allow you to see the engine data on your phone and be under uh, short term fuel trims and long term fuel trims it should be under 10 it should be single digit numbers and both those that both of those if it's over 10 then you and it's a plus that means that there's a vacuum leak and the computer's compensating it's adding fuel to compensate for the extra air that's getting into the engine and it's not going to run right so in that case i would be checking the pcv pipes and the throttle body gasket maybe the intake manifold gasket itself is leaking but no when I hit the gas and this drops exactly how it should sometimes when engines are warm they drop a little slow or faster I don't know I'm getting too far into this too many details tell me in the description if you like that well, thanks for watching my video. That's how you change the spark plugs on a 1.8 liter Versa from 2009. It's not bad, a couple hours. If you like the video, please hit that subscribe button, like, share, you know, leave a comment, start a conversation, and have a good one.